Hey, what's up guys? It's Covert Code here, and in today's video, I thought I would tackle something which many of you or most of you have problems with, okay? It's how you can actually learn the script. Now, many people have different ways of learning, but I'm going to tackle and list the most popular and the most common ways you guys can learn to script. Um, so let's start with number one. Number one is actually, you know, quite self-explanatory. It's like watching YouTube videos. So I recommend this for those who have absolutely no idea how to code, okay? So if you do not have any prior coding experiences or, you know, if, if you're just starting out, um, you would watch YouTube videos. Now, I have a playlist on the fundamentals. I'm not talking about how to make something like a gun or something like that. I'm just telling you guys to learn the fundamentals of coding. You know, variables, functions, loops, stuff like that. Things which will serve you in the long run. Um, and you really just need to learn those, okay? Now, when you've actually got a solid understanding of the basics, yeah, then you can actually expand on the tutorials on how to, you know, make specific things. Ideally, you would visit those tutorials if you're making a game and you do not know how to make a certain thing, okay? You wouldn't just watch those for fun. If you want to learn how to make, um, you know, specific things or just expand your, uh, your knowledge base, I guess, you would actually use Point number three, okay? I'll actually get to that later though. Point number two, guys, is the wiki. It is the most, I dare say, um, the most broad collection of knowledge on Roblox scripting there is, I think. Every single API, function, uh, you know, event, anything like that is listed on the wiki, okay? If you have a problem with something, like if you don't know what tween service is, you would just go to the wiki and you know, I don't think it's called the wiki anymore. No, it's not. But like, you just search up the, you know, the pro the the thing that you're trying to learn about, and it will come up. It's in most cases they have examples on how to use, you know, the the specific thing you're trying to learn about. Um, but still, nonetheless, they have an extremely good, um, you know, team of people working on this, and they put in hours of work into making sure that it is the you know, the best source out there for Roblox scripting material, I guess. Um, it's basically Wikipedia for like Roblox related things, okay? So that's pretty much that. Number three, guys, is free models. Now, I'm not just telling you guys to just insert a free model into your game and just, you know, make a game with free models, okay? Never make a game with free models. Um, nowadays, there's a lot of like free models with like viruses, quote unquote, um, implemented into them. Uh, you do not want those in your game, okay, guys? Um, why I'm mentioning free models is, me, myself, I found this to be one of the most helpful ways that I actually learned to code, okay? I would use free models, I drag them to my game, and they open up the script. So if I have a gun, okay, if I want to learn how to make a gun or just learn how it works, I would search up gun in the toolbox and I just dissect the code. So. I'd read the code. Now, some of these may be very complex to read if you have absolutely no knowledge, so that is why I recommend starting with point number one. Um, but if you actually have some sort of understanding, um, it is ideal to know when to use certain like code fundamental objects or things that you learned in point number one. Like, if you don't know when to use loops or if you don't know when to use certain variables or something like that, Free models will help you get a pretty good, actually, understanding of how and why developers use certain aspects in their code, okay? Um, plus, it will give you a much, much better experience uh, sort of working with code than just looking at the videos and copying down what they're doing, okay, guys? Um, now, obviously, if you're trying to learn, always, always, always challenge yourself. It's okay to just dissect the code and learn what it's doing, but once you've actually, well, once you think you understand how the code works, try and recreate that, okay? Challenge yourselves, because that's the only way you guys will grow. Now, point number four, um, pretty straightforward, is Google search, okay? If you're trying to make a gun, or if you're trying to make a sword or something, then, you know, just type in how to make a sword on Roblox. 
and you get a vast, vast array of results, okay? But usually when you're coding, you're not gonna search up how to make something. It's like, if you have a problem with your code, you're gonna type up the, like, the error message that you get, or maybe, you know, you got an API, like tween service, or, you know, something like that, which you do not know anything about. And when you Google search, you'll see people who have had these problems and they've probably asked your question before. So that is why you should always, always use Google to search up, you know, if anyone else had problems like yours before. Because usually there are solutions by people um, and that is how you would learn. You'd just read the solution, try and implement that, and bam, you, you know how to fix that in the future. Now, there are other resources besides Google search where you could, and the, like the wiki, where you could go to, you know, debug your code. One such place, if you have access to it, is the Roblox Developers Forum, okay? This is the sort of, sort of powerhouse forum group of members of the Roblox community, which like comes together and like, you know, helps each other, shares knowledge and just shares their creations, discusses things. It is, uh, I believe, you have to apply to join, but you can still read certain sections like the help and feedback sections and the resources sections. Now, these have excellent quality sort of posts on them, usually, um, but you can actually learn from these. So if someone's had a problem with something, um, if, you've, if you have access to the forum, you can try and help them and learn that way, or um, you could learn from the answers that they get. Another resource, um, one which is free, you don't have to join this sort of community here, you don't have to apply for this, is scriptinghelpers.org. Now, it's just basically a community of scripters which, you know, if you post a question on there, uh, they will help you usually. Um, now, sometimes you're, you're gonna post a question which doesn't make sense or which you should have done more research on, and you may get some backlash from that. So always make sure to research about your questions before actually asking them to people, okay? But if you have a good question and if you're having a legitimate issue, then these people will help you. Do not ask these guys to script something for you. Um, because you will get a backlash, that's 100% guaranteed. Now, you may be thinking, um, okay, well, I follow these tips, I've got a solid or somewhat solid understanding of scripting. Nice. How do I actually proceed? Like, how do I grow from here, you know? Um, the first thing you would do here is, you would, you know, you would make your first game. Now, don't expect your game to be something amazing like, you know, front page game, uh, it does happen sometimes, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to discourage you guys, but usually your first game will not blow up, it will not, you know, make a lot of money, if any at all, okay? Um, but that is how you learn and that is how you make more games. You learn from your mistakes. Now, your first game, try and keep it simple, okay? Don't try and make something like Jailbreak or Mad City or something like that, because the chances are you don't know how to make most of the game. But even if you sort of manage to piece the game together, I guess. That's a bit too complex of a project for you guys to start off with, especially to debug the problems, okay? So what I would suggest is make something simple, make a nobby, then go to a simulator or a tycoon game, learn how those scripts work, um, and then move up the ladder, make something more complex. Um, but never start with something complex, okay? Just make something simple at first. It doesn't have to be the best, you just have to be proud of yourself for actually making a game. When you've actually made a game, then you can make more games, okay? You can't just, you know, blow up instantly. It does happen sometimes, as I said before, but, you know, just make your first game. Sometimes people have problems, uh, you know, actually knowing what to make or how to make it. So what I would suggest as my final tip, guys, is plan your scripts, okay? Um, Use tools such as flowcharts. If you don't know how flowcharts work, there are free resources online about flowcharts and how to use them, okay? But it's just basically a simplified way to plan the mechanics and the, the functionality of certain like systems in your game. So if you're gonna make a gun, for example, I know I've been mentioning this a lot, but if you're gonna make a gun, first you would have to check if there's a cooldown, okay? And then if there is a cooldown, then you cannot shoot. So you go back to the start. 
If there is not a cooldown, then you set the cooldown to true, for example, and then you do whatever you want. You make the gun, like, sort of, you know, get smoke going out of the gun or something, you know? But that needs to be planned. Now, obviously, if you're a more experienced scripter, you won't plan everything. You're just gonna, like, you know, like, think about it as you go. But if you're just starting out, planning is essential. Because you won't get lost in your own code, and that way you won't be discouraged, you won't be lost, essentially. Okay? That's all I have for you guys. Um, leave a like, subscribe, uh, leave comments about what I should make in the future, and I'll see you guys next time.